Bless the Lord. Come on, stand up to your feet. You're before a king. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. He came to give life and life more abundant. Come on, praise him. Amen. When you praise God, you're going to be a glad person. When you don't praise God, you're going to be a sad person. You're going to be a grumpy person. The praise, the praise. As we praise God, it just, it just releases a joy. It releases a gladness. It releases a happiness if we want to get down to that plane. But that's what it does. Uh, you see Christians that are happy and full of joy, full of laughter, they, they praise God and they worship God. That's what they do. And when I see Christians that are all, they don't praise God. I know they don't praise God. You know, we, we got to learn to praise God. We got to learn how to bless God with all that we have. And I'm going to encourage you guys. I know you guys are like, man, this guy's kind of mean. I'm not mean. I'm just, I'm firm. Sergeants are mean, huh? Sergeants are tough, right? I'm a softy, right, mijo? That's a, that's a military guy right there, so. I just want to encourage you guys to always bless the Lord. All, you know, even if you just got a hallelujah in you, if you just got a thank you, Jesus, I love you, Lord. You know, when you're in the shower, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're in the restroom, when you're warming up your car, it doesn't take much to get the, uh, uh, the joy of the Lord inside of you. But you got to learn how to praise God. If, uh, Put up uh, uh, Psalms 511 for me there, Jesus, please. Psalms 511. It's just beautiful uh, uh, to give the Lord glory and praise. Uh, I don't know if you guys been to places I've been in life. You know, sadness, brokenheartedness, uh, a loneliness, loneliness, and things like that in life. And when you come out of that, you have a victory. And when you come out of those places, those dark places, those lonely places, there should be a joy in you. You know what? I got victory. I overcame. I was sad, but now I'm glad. Amen? I was mad, but now I'm glad. And you got to learn to bless God. Uh, you can't hang on to that and keep that. You keep that, you're going to, man, some of you young people, you're going to grow up to be grumps. You are. You're going you're to be telling people, get out of my lawn. Get, out, get away from my car. You know? Grumpy people, man, you know, uh, really, man, we got to learn how to enjoy life. Life ain't that serious. Life is not that serious. You guys think life is real serious. It's not. Life is probably serious about 20, 15% of the time. The rest of the time, we should be having a good time. Should have been enjoying some tacos, some menudo, some rice and beans, amen. So you can tell I'm hungry, right? Amen. I haven't ate since yesterday. So, uh. uh yeah, you, you got to learn how to enjoy your life. Even if no one's happy with you, you know what? I'm going to be happy. If no one else smiles, I'm going to smile. If everybody's grumpy in the house, let them be grumpy. I'm not going to be grumpy. Amen? And just learn to have a good time in Jesus' name. Here the Bible says, let all those who rejoice, who put their trust in the Lord. You got to put your trust in God. Amen? Let them ever shout joy. There it is. That's one person knows how to do it. Amen. That's how you do it right there. When you hear that joy, shout for joy, you should be shouting for joy. Amen. What God has done in your marriages, what God has done in your finances, what God has done in you. If you're really happy and joyful that God has done something in your life or he's doing something in your life, you should be shouting for joy. Amen. You should be glad. I'm glad I'm a new person. I'm glad. I'm glad God saved me. I'm glad that God delivered me from my old ways. Amen. And uh, we should be just happy for that. If you're not happy for anything else, be happy you're saved. Be happy that your name, Eric Gonzalez Jr., is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That God knows your name. When they start looking through the book, Eric, Eric Jr., uh, Eric Jr., let me see. The angels will say, let me put on my glasses. Maybe, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Oh, no, there it is. Yeah, yeah, Eric Jr., right there. We should be rejoicing. We should be happy, amen. You're going to heaven. I rejoice because I'm going to heaven, man. 
I'm glad. Amen. It ain't even about here. It ain't even about this earth. We got, we got our eyes fixed on this earth too hard. You know, about certain things. This is going to pass. You know, us that are uh, 50 years old, 60, 70 years old, life went by fast. Amen. Quick. It just goes by quick. Me and Tomas were having that conversation. And he asked me, Pastor, does life go by fast? I go, real fast. It goes real fast. Life goes by so fast. Right, Eddie? Like, man, what happened when I was 19? What happened when I was 20? What happened when I was 25? Remember that, Emmanuel? <laughs> we, were, we thought no one could take us out, you know. But it says, shout for joy because you, uh, uh, because you defend them. God defends us. He protects us. Amen. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. How many of you love the name of Jesus? Come on, you got to love that name. You got to bless that name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going uh, to get in our worship. Uh, uh, go ahead and have a seat because I'm going to do the uh, 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 announcements here real quick. That will give uh, the latecomers a chance to, to come on in. Uh, you guys are lucky I'm not like uh, a movie I saw with Robin Williams. I forget the name of it. He's counseling two people to get married. And uh, he tells them they have to go to church, part of the uh, part of the uh, program that he's giving them and things like that. And uh, and he says, you can't be late because if you're going to be late, you're going to be surprised. And uh, they happen to come late. You know, all the doors are closed. People are in already. And, and the couple walks in and they walk into the back. As soon as they walk in, he's standing here at the pulpit. They have a big choir, probably like 30, 40 people. And they all stand up and they go, you're late, you're late. You're late, you're late, you're late. In front of everybody in the couple, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine if we did that. Man, that would be crazy, huh? People get offended and leave. <laughs> uh, so I want to welcome everyone on Facebook there in Jesus' name, anyone? Everyone on YouTube, thank you for coming out and being part of it. Here uh, we have our worship team up here, and uh, I'm just going off. Uh, now, uh, my announcers sit there. Oh, I have my announcers in my pocket. I forgot. So I just wrote them down. Amen. Uh, we want to thank the Ortiz family for the flowers. Amen. Oswaldo, Mary, and the twins. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, you can see Sister Kimberly. Kimberly, raise your hand right there. She'll get you the flowers. You guys will just give her all the information she needs, and she'll order the flowers, and she'll go pick them up and bring them here. Amen? So uh, uh, that's for every family. Every family can take a turn uh, buying some flowers. Even some of you singles and some of you teenagers, you guys make money. Some of you people make money. Don't be a tightwad, you know. Give unto the Lord in Jesus' name. He'll give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will men hunt you down to give into your bosom, the Bible says. Amen. You can go half with somebody. If you ain't got the money, you know what? Let's go half. Let's go three ways, some of you youth, the people in the youth. Amen. This, uh, this July 30th, this July 30th, uh, we're having a combo meeting with the Life Center out on 17th Street. Uh, that's Pastor Nathi's church, our men. It's going to be a men's meeting. We're going to be getting together. Amen. Pastor Nathi and myself will uh, uh, be speaking to the men. So encourage men to come out. Encourage your theos, your nephews, your sons, your stepsons, your son-in-laws, you know, whoever, neighbors, co-workers. Just invite them to come on out. We'll have the flyer up uh, Thursday so you guys can get the information. I, uh, I really, really, uh, uh, I want you guys to pay attention right here. I want the ushers to pay attention too. Because we're doing announcements. Right, put kids' days up there for me. We're, we're, we're doing announcements. And I send out a text, and you guys send right to me, when's this taking place? What time is that going to happen? What's the date? I'm like, oh, my God. How old are you, 45? Are you serious? I'm like, oh, my God. We have, we have these things up here every weekend. Every week and the announcements go up. I don't know what you're doing. Pay attention. Take a picture. It lasts longer. Amen. Take take a picture. Kids Day, July 23rd. 
right? We're going to be giving away pack, backpacks. We need supplies. We need pencils. We need paper. We need glue. We need scissors. We need rulers. We need uh, everything that goes inside a backpack. We need that. So uh, we need your help. We need volunteers. You know, there, there's a sign-up sheet out there. Our church, everyone I'm looking at right now, everyone should be helping out. Everyone should be helping out. It shouldn't just be, it shouldn't just be pastor and the, uh, what you guys call his groupies. No, they hang around with me because they work with me. Amen. So we need help. We need everyone we can, uh, we can get. All hands on deck. All right, all hands on deck. You know, we're, we're trying to win, we're trying to win the Bransford. It's just a small area. We still got a long way to go. We still got to win behind Saddleback, on the side of Saddleback. We got to win over here by the uh, uh, South Coast Plaza. There's a lot of territory that we have. This place has to get full. Look around. There's a lot of empty chairs. Amen. We have to fill it. You have to invite people. There's a power in an invite. You invite one person, you never know. They may come. Angie? Never. You may say, oh, no, she's too cool. I'm embarrassed to ask her, you know, my friend. You never know. She may be hurting at home. How many young people we know out there that are committing suicide, hurting themselves, falling into things that we fell into? How many young people out there that need to be loved on and need a hug? You know, they, they smile and all that, and they put on their makeup, and they look good and all that. But on the inside, they're sad. They're torn up. And you guys have Jesus. We need to share Jesus, young people. You know, we need to share Jesus. Hey, can I hug you? Can I pray with you? And you don't have to pray for New Zealand and Ireland and all that stuff. You know, you guys get into that. Just pray for them. You know, hey, Maria, I just want to pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you for Maria's life. I thank you for her salvation. You're speaking by faith. I thank you that she's healthy and she's well. And I thank you that she recognizes your love wherever she goes. That you would send people into her life to love on her, to respect her and honor her, Lord. I pray that she make right choices, good choices, God choices, Lord. Protect her and watch over her in Jesus' name. Amen. Fifteen seconds to bless somebody. To go out of your way and bless somebody and change people's lives. That's all it takes, grown-ups, too. We can't be selfish. We're Christians. You have a treasure hidden in these earthly vessels. You have joy that they don't have joy. You know, you're going through stuff, but you know how to go through it. You're overcoming because of the power of the, of the word of God that lives inside of you. Amen. And people you on, on, on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube, it's time to come out. It, it's time to come out of that place and, and come out here and share your faith and share your love with one another. That we would sharpen each other. Iron sharpening iron. Amen. It's time to come out. If you got to wear a mask, wear a mask. We're, you know, we're, we're not going to trip, you know, because you're wearing a mask. Don't trip because we're not wearing a mask. You know, uh, that, that's all. You know, that's what I tell people when people tell me when I walk in the store, where's your mask at? Sir? I said, I'm not telling you anything about you wearing a mask. Don't tell me anything about me not wearing a mask. Just stay away from me. You know, six feet. If that's, if that's what's going to save you, do that. I'll tell them stuff like that. I'll be nice about it. You know, just keep your distance and I'll keep my distance. You know, we're going to be okay in Jesus' name, right? Amen. And we use our faith. So I just want to encourage you guys on that. But uh, Kids Day's coming up on the 23rd. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. In Jesus' name. So we, we, we need all that. Uh, today, uh, right after uh, praise and worship, we're going to have a graduation uh, presentation for the uh, 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 new beginners class. Amen. We have about... 12, 13 people who, uh, who completed the course. So uh, praise God. You know, we're going to start another one in September. It's, it's a basic course, ABC. It's ABC that, uh, uh, about Christ. You know, why you, got, why you received Jesus Christ. Why are you going to be baptized? Why, why do you believe in communion? Why do you do communion? Just different, different things like that that we should know as Christians. If people ask you that, you should know that. Why were you baptized? I don't know. I like the salt water. No. I didn't like it. 
No. We do it because we're surrendering our lives to Christ once and for all. We're saying we're dying to the world and we're being resurrected alive unto Jesus now. Amen. And we want the world to know it. We want our family members to know it. So I just encourage you guys, to, uh, right after uh, praise and worship, we're going to go in and do that after our tithe and offering. I just say, and uh, don't forget to give. You know, I know uh, uh, some of you guys always, always talking about money. It's for your, it's for your best, not my best. I, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I've been giving and tithing for 28 years. I lack in no good thing. I got more than enough. Amen. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about cars. I drive a 2013. It's an old car. But you know what? I got more than enough joy, happiness, gladness, strength. Amen. In my life. Uh, I praise God and I bless God for that. He encourages me when I feel down and out. Because pastor does feel down and out sometimes. But he comes and he talks to me. He said, Juan, you know, call me up. Juan, I just, uh, he'll call pastor up and say, Hey, Pastor, I'm just calling you to tell you I love you, man. That's all. I just want to say I love you, Pastor. That lifts you up. That lifts a man up. Amen? Yeah. Amen. That we just call each other. Ladies, call each other up. You know, I, I ain't going to prophesy. I don't have a word. I just want to say I love you, Arlena. You know, that's all. It's very simple to encourage someone and build someone up. Very simple. You just got to do it. Just got to do it. There's, there's people that are lonely here. There's people that don't have friends in our church, as friendly as it is, that don't have friends here. We should have friends, you know, especially you people that are seasoned. You seasoned people, you should be going out of your way to say hi to the strangers, the people you don't know. You know them by face, like, hey, hermano, hermana, how you doing? You don't know their name. You know, what's their name? What's their name? What's... That's why when you're with me, I'll say their name in front of you. Because I don't think you know their name. And I know some of you guys, I know, I know who she is, mentirosa. He didn't know who she was. <laughs> so you can get to know each other's names, amen, and get to know each other. Uh, what are they asking here? They have another list here. Oh, okay, they're just asking for crayons, glue sticks. All the supplies that we would need, uh, gifts, we need gifts, raffles. We're going to be doing raffles, so we're going to need that. Uh, we're going to need food supplies, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, chili beans, uh, cotton candy, all, all that. And if you, if you don't have that, but you know what, I, I can't go, pastors. I'm busy. My life is busy, this and that. I'm working two jobs, whatever it may be. Give a donation on the envelope. Ask for two envelopes instead of one. And just write one for kids' day, and I'm going to give $100. I'm going to give $50. I'm going to give $5, whatever it may be. Just put it on the children. You know, I'm putting $2 down for the children. Amen for Children's Day. And that way we have more than enough and we can buy all the supplies we need. We have uh, two ladies that are willing to go out for you to shop for you. So, you know, hey, here's 100 bucks. Whatever you need, sister, hermano, you know, and they'll go out and they'll do the shopping for you. Imagine that. It's a little better than Amazon. Come on. So we're going to bless the Lord, guys. Uh, uh, that's it right there real quick. Like, amen. <laughs> Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to praise God. We're going to bless God in our worship. This is a house this is a house of freedom. You can clap your hands. You can move to the left. You can move to the right. You can cha-cha if you know how to cha-cha and all that stuff. Amen. You can move and groove in the house of God. You can bless the Lord. I'm asking you to bless the Lord. You come to the altar. I will tell you, some of you want to be free. Someone, you want to get out of that coolness. You want to get out of that coldness. You want to get out of that stiffness. You want to just get out of the life you're living. Come to the altar. Some of you teenagers are stiff. I, 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 I'm around you guys, and I'm like, man, these guys, they're, they're just stiff people, man. You got to be free. You got to be free in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you, and we thank you for who you are. That you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You provide our faith. You provide our joy. You provide our strength and our courage. Father, you provide our gladness. The smile that's on our face is because of you, because we know you. So we ask that you bless this time as we sit here, Father, as we stand here, as we raise our hands, as we dance, as we sing. We worship you and no other. You are our king. You are our Lord. You are our God. You are the great I am. 
So, Father, we bless you and thank you for all that you're doing, all that you've done, and all that you're about to do in our lives. We're going to give you glory. We're going to give you praise. We're going to dance and we're going to raise our hands. We're going to be full of joy. We're going to have a shout toward the heavens, Lord God. So we love you and we bless you and we thank you for the divine protection over every one of us in this room, Lord. A divine protection, even over ourselves. Even over ourselves. I pray and I thank you and I bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys ready? Oh, come on, come on. We can do better than that. Come on. Worship, worship. Cup your hands, cup your hands. Hallelujah. Worship your God. There is freedom in this place. Freedom in this place. Come on. Whatever you can with, shake it off right now. Shake it off. That's already done and over with. Come on, jump in this river where there's freedom. Let your voice, bones come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. There is a river. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean filling deep with fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart. Bursting, bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive. There is a current. There is a current. Deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The blood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising, bursting, bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. freedom in this place. We speak freedom and joy in this place. We worship you, Father. Break open prison doors. Set all the captives free. Come on, sing it out. Spring up the well. Spring up the well. Spring up the well in me. Nothing can stop. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up the well. Spring up the well. Spring up the well in me. Break open. Break open. Break the door. Set all the captives free. Spring up the well. Spring up the well. Spring up the well, up the well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up the well. Spring up the well. Spring up the well in me. Yeah, spring up. Spring up the well. Come on, sing it up. Spring up the well. Spring up the well in me. Yeah, spring up. Spring up the well. Spring up the well. Spring up the well in me. We come alive. We come alive in the river. 
We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. Sing it again. We come alive in the river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. We come alive. Worship your God, worship your God, come on. You're a deliverer, you're a healer. The one that's working in you right now, right now, come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. For I know there's breakthrough happening right glory, now. Glory, breakthrough glory. in your kids, breakthrough in your Praise marriage, breakthrough in your mind, Let breakthrough in your heart Jesus. in the name of Jesus, Let come on. He's setting you free. Strongholds are coming down. Strongholds are being broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, there's a story in the Bible of a lady that had issues. For years, she had many, many issues, and she needed help, and she needed something, and she heard of a man. She heard of a man that was, was going to heal her. You know what she did? She went after that man. So you coming in here, you've been, you been doing this whole coming to church, but your, your heart is far from God. You know what you're going through. You know the things that you're dealing with. Don't leave this place carrying the same stuff. You're going to come to the Father. Just the touch of Him will set you free. She wasn't just healed. She was made whole. She was made new. And let me tell you, there is nothing that you brought in this place that He can take care of for you today. In the name of Jesus. Faith is rising. We know, we know, we know. Harpy racing. Harpy racing. Living in the freedom. The joy overflowing. We know, we know, we know. We know, we know. We know, 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 we Well, you know, Santana's hearing you right now. Worship your God. Worship your God. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it 
sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. And this is what it sounds like. Come on, let it be heard. This is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. When the church is alive, 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 when the church is Gloria a Dios, aleluya. Aleluya. Thank you, Father. Aleluya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For we are free in the name of Jesus. Keep praising. Free to worship you. Free to shout your name. Free to exalt your name. Aleluya. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. We give it all to you right now, Father. Whatever it is, Father. Whatever it is, Father, that we've been carrying. Whatever it is, Father, that we've been carrying. Pray and come. And turn this thing around. God, turn.
know the circumstance. You know what you brought in today.
taking place within my family right now, Father. I want to read this passage to you. This is the word of the living God. The word is alive and the word is well. All you have to do is believe. There's nothing else you have to do. It's believe God and trust God. 
We're saying right now. God could change your life right now. You can be a complete different person when you walk out of this place if you would believe God. I believed God 28 years ago for a new life. I was tired of my life, the way I lived and the way it was going, and God changed my life. And I was in a garage. I was one step away from being homeless. And I asked the Lord, if you're for reals and you really exist, I was just like you guys, skeptical. I was just like you guys. I wouldn't raise my hands. I wouldn't uh, shout and all that. I, I, that wasn't me at that time. That was the old me. But now I have a new life in Christ. The Bible says, if there be any man in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. It said, old things have passed away. Behold, check it out. All things have become new now. We're new creatures in Christ. Every one of you that have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you just don't know how to behave in the newness. You don't know how to behave in the spiritual realm. You don't know what it is because you've never experienced it. But you're experiencing it today. And you'll never know the goodness of God until you take that first step of faith. I'm speaking to everybody in here. And I know some of you are hindered by your background. Some of you are hindered by sin. Some of you are hindered by uh, traditions of your life, uh, the way you think, your doubt, your disbelief. Some of you are hindered by pain and suffering. I want you to know that some of you are hindered by toughness. Some of you cats are real tough, and some of you ladies too. You know, you look pretty on the outside, but your heart is hard and it is tough. And this is what the Lord would say. I'm going to read right out the Bible for you guys won't say, oh, it's Pastor Angel speaking. This is the word of the Lord. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw a fig tree withered from its roots. Being reminded, Peter said to him, Rabbi, look, the fruit which you cursed is withered. Jesus went to this fig tree a day before, going to eat from the fig tree. And when he got there, there was no figs. So he cursed it. He said, you'll die from your root up. And there's a lot of Christians like that. We look happy. We look good. We look glad. We carry our Bibles. We're dressed the way we're supposed to dress and things like that. But there's no, there's no fruit in our lives. I'm not, I'm not being ugly or mean to you. I'm, I'm telling you the truth here. The we need to live fruitful lives. How will they know that you're my disciples or my Christians? By your love. Do you only love your own? Your own little circle? Your own children? Can you love a stranger's child? Can you love this stranger, this little fat guy right here? Can you, can you love on me? We got to learn how to love on one another. This is how they'll know we're Christians. It's not about how much Bible you know, how much you can quote and things like that, or how much you give in the offering. It's not about that. It's about love. Friday night, we were at a meeting up in Corona. Three, four people came to my line to ask for prayer, and the Lord said, they need love. They have love. They just need to learn to express it. And I told them that. I said, you have love in you, and you need to express that love now. You need to give that love away. If you're a nice person, be nice. If you're a happy person, be happy. Share that smile. Share that laughter. Share the gladness. Don't let people change you. Don't allow anyone to change who you are unless Christ Jesus does. Only Christ can change you. I want to encourage you guys. Verse 22, and Jesus answered saying to them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain means a circumstance, a dilemma, a problem. Be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says he's, it's going to happen. It will be granted to him. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask 
when you pray and ask, believe that you receive them and they will be granted unto you. Wherever you are standing praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions. I'm going to read this last one. But if you do not forgive, neither will the Father in heaven forgive you your transgressions. It all starts off with forgiveness. And forgiveness is part of love. If you love people, you're going to forgive them. Because we've all done somebody wrong. We've all backstabbed somebody. We've all gossiped about somebody. I ain't getting no amen over here, you know, but we've all backstabbed somebody. We've all gossiped about somebody. Can I get an amen? amen. Say amen. Come on. You, you know you've done it. You, when they ain't around, you talked about them and things like that. And then when they come around, you smile at their face. Oh, how you doing, comadre? You know, things like that. We got to learn to forgive. Because if you remember what you've done and you were forgiven for it, you should be able to forgive other people now. Amen? You should be able to forgive them. But the Bible says when you pray, believe that you receive. Right now, as that song was going on, as we were worshiping God, if you believe that, that someone right now is being healed, it's happening in Jesus' name. It may not be a physical healing, but it could be an emotional healing. It could be a mental healing because some of you think bad. Some of you think perverted. Some of you think negative. Your mind is negative. And the Bible says, in, if you read your Bible, it says what the eye sees and how that eye is, if there's light in that eye, everything's going to be bright. But if that eye is dark and full of negativity and full of death, that's what it's going to see. But when you pray and you believe, like the song was saying, put up the lyrics because I don't know the lyrics. You know, the last song, God is up to something. That's all I know about it right there. Amen. I don't know them, but God is up to something. Go to the next one because it goes a little further. God, he's healing someone. Amen. He's saving someone. Right now you're being saved from a circumstance. You're being saved from yourself. Because a lot of it has to do with yourself. You don't like yourself. You're not glad in yourself. And you got to forgive yourself. That's the person I had to forgive was myself. I forgave everybody but myself. For all the harm I did to my children. For all the harm I did to myself, to my parents, to my friends. I had to ask for forgiveness. Father, forgive Angel Baruch for all that he's done. And God forgave me. The Bible says that he's just and faithful to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all our sins. From all our sins. But we have to do that. If you really want to be a Christian and a disciple, I'm not talking about playing church. I'm not talking about carrying a Bible. I'm not talking about speaking Christianese. I'm talking about from the corazón, from the heart. If you really want to be a Christian, forgive yourself. So what? You blew it. You messed up. That's behind you now. Learn to live free. Nothing should stop you from coming to the altar. Oh, I messed up. I drank last week. I got loaded last night. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I came to church loaded. I got saved and I was loaded and I walked out the place sober. I was getting high for four days in a row, smoking crack, smoking meth, smoking pot. Every day I smoked pot. That was just a gimme. That was nothing. No more. Drinking alcohol. I sat in the front row. They put me in the front row. Loaded as could be. But when I walked out of that place, I was free. I was free. That was 28 years ago. Never did drugs again. Never drank again. Never slept with somebody that wasn't my wife. Ever again. I slept for, I lived for God and I live for God today. I wanted a change in my life. I was tired of beating myself up. 
Nobody can beat you up more than yourself. You know this. We got to stop that now. God is up to something. God is doing something. Right now, not tomorrow, not next week. He's doing it right now. Right now, if you would only believe, if you would come to the altar, take a step of faith. I'm telling you, take a step of faith that you believe God and you trust God. God can change your life, radically change your life. Right now.
to understand this. We don't do this for show. That's the farthest from my mind and from my heart. What's closest, what's close to my heart is God and his will. And God's will is that you would be healed. That you would be delivered from your past and your traditions your hurts you got to let those walls down and when you're in love with God you have to be vulnerable just like when you fall in love with a man and a woman you let your guards down and you tell them everything they may use it against you and you may use it against them the secrets they told you the thoughts they had but God's not like that. God is not like man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he should repent. He's not like that. God wants you to be healed and wants you to be free. And I pray that one day the whole church would be at the altar. That's my prayer. That pride would come off, misunderstanding would fall. That's not me. That that, you know, it's not you because you're a new person in Christ now. I pray. I see my leadership out there and that saddens me. To see my leadership still out there. And not at the altar. You guys know my heart. My leaders know who I am and what I'm about. I'm about saving souls, about loving on you. That's what I'm about. Some of you guys will stay stuck where you're at. And you won't be able to blame God. You won't be able to blame pastor. You will not. 
I heard a man say yesterday, he told a young man, this is your choice. Remember Mark saying that? This is what you wanted. This is not what God wanted. This is what you want. This is who you want to be so you will be that person. God wants us to be new. God wants us to be free. God wants us to be full of joy. Forget whatever your uh, ex-husband did. Forget whatever your ex-wife did to you. Forget whatever your children did to you or a co-worker or a, a girl that stole your boyfriend in the fourth grade. Forget about her. Forget about her. You, you think you disappoint God? You think you surprise God? You don't disappoint God. You don't surprise God. Oh, I'm a pothead. I'm, I still drink. That's no surprise to God. God still loves you right where you're at and who you are right now. God still loves you. But God wants you to come to the altar. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be well. And some of you kids don't take, don't take what your mom or your dad give you. That's none of your business and that's none of your heaviness. That belongs to adults. And you adults watch how you speak around your children because they hear everything you say. You think they don't hear. They're hearing every single word, every single argument, every single discussion. They're listening. You hurt mama, you're hurting them. You hurt daddy, you're hurting them. Don't take it, children. That's none of your business. And to be honest, don't discuss things with your children. It's none of their business. It's between you and your wife, you and your spouse, you and your husband. That's who it's between. Take it to the room and be quiet. For you can be healed and you can be right. For me, I just, it's hard to believe that people would tell me they love Jesus. People would tell me that. But they don't come to worship Jesus in his own house. Some of you can't even bow your, your bodies because your body's in control. You can't even bow before God. Some of you can't even raise your hands and surrender to God. Your body's in control. Your flesh, your natural man is in control and not your spirit man. Some of you can't even say hallelujah or glory to God. Some of you can't even say that because your flesh is in control. You're still living under the sinful nature. Instead of living in the spiritual nature. It's not about what you did. It's not about how you did it. It's about what he did on the cross. That's what it's about. And how he did it. And he did it for every one of us. For every one of us to set us free. You call yourself a Christian. Christian means to be Christ-like. And I know some of you are saying, I'm never coming back to this church. I, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. I've held back many years, many years of telling this. I want us free. I want us to live for Christ and love Christ, no matter what goes on. Some of us blow it as adults. We look at our children thinking they're blowing it, and you're the blow it. Because if the truth be told, they say, I'm just like you. Because that's who we made. I have a 37-year-old son. Now he's getting right with God and he's making moves. For the last two years, he's given his life to Christ. And he's working it all out. Amen. But that guy right there, I would look at his life and I would hear him. And all the anger and all the bitterness that was spilling out of his mouth. I said, boy, he sounds just like me, huh, Dave? He sounds just like me. And he was angry, ready to kill somebody in a second. And that's not what God wants. And then I have my son, Lucas. 
It reminds me of who I am now in Christ. A peaceful young man, a quiet young man. And I said, those are my lives before me. Before Christ and after Christ. God showed me that. We're new creations in Christ now. Let's not be ashamed to say I'm a Christian. Are you going to live a perfect life? No, you're not. Am I going to live a perfect life? No, I'm not. Am I going to blow it, man? I am going to blow it. I'm a man just like you. Well, we don't blow it as big. We don't blow it as often. And we don't try to blow it no more. Now we try to live for Christ and give our best to Christ. That's all he wants. He knows you're going to falter. He knows you're going to mess up. But I'm going to tell you one thing. His love never fails. His love never fails. So you left it here at the altar. Your hurt, your pain, whatever it is. You thought you were going to divorce. You thought you were going to uh, lose your house. All that's left here. Leave it, in, leave it in the hands of God. And go back to your seats a new person. Smile at your husband. Smile at your wife. Smile at your friend next to you. Smile at each other. Leave it right there. She's good. Let the Lord do what he has to do. And I'm preaching to the choir too because sometimes the choir thinks they got it all together because they sing to the Lord and they worship God and they bless God 24-7. And that don't mean you got it all together. Sometimes the choir needs some preaching too. I've been told that by brothers when I'm out in the street witnessing. They, they tell me, Juan, brother, you preaching to the choir. And I said, the choir needs some preaching sometimes too. Sometimes the pastor got to turn around and, and preach to the choir. Because they ain't got it together all together either. But they worship their God. They honor their God. Amen. That's what they're called to do. That's what we're called to do is worship God. You come to his house to worship him. His house. Don't disrespect his house. Don't get on your phone while worship's going on. Don't sit there laughing and talking. And you children too, listen to me. Because I've been watching you too from back here. I've been watching you too. Playing around. Tickling each other. We're worshiping God. And I want you to learn early. That we're worshiping God. Children need to learn that we're worshiping God. He's alive. He's well. And I'm not being mean to him. I don't think I'm not. I'm their pastor. I'm their spiritual father. If your spiritual father can't correct you, who can? I've been corrected many times. I've been rebuked by my pastor. I've been sat down by my pastor. And I learned to be a man because of that man. He taught me how to live right and live with character. I was angry just like some of you. Probably more angry than a lot of you in this room. You think you got anger issues. I had anger issues. And God gave me peace and God gave me love. God loved me so much that hell had to leave. Hell had to get out of my body, out of my mind because of the love of God. I want you guys to know that. All you got to do is open your hearts. Hey, Morris, that's all. Father, love me. Love on me, Father, like I've never been loved on before. Teach me to love. Some of you got to ask them that. Life, the experiences of life have hardened your hearts. What you see your parents go through have hardened your hearts. And now we're hardening the hearts of our children. The same way we, we were hardened. From generation to generation, instead of passing blessings, we're passing cursings. We have to stop that. 
just because your father was a blower, your father was a drunk, and he was a wife beater, doesn't make you a drunk and a, a blower and a wife beater. You can be different in Christ Jesus. Amen? Because your mom was a certain way doesn't mean you have to be that certain way. You can be different. I'm different from my father. My father's a pastor too. I have a lot of his characteristics, but I have my own characteristics. And I learn from God. God taught me a lot and he continues to teach me. And that's what I want to do with you. We've got to learn to be committed. Some of you don't know, even know what committed it is. What loyalty is. Be loyal to people. Be loyal to God. Be committed to what you say. That's why I talk about sympathizers. Ted, you know what I'm talking about. They talk a good game. But they ain't down for the game. Here in Jesus Christ. Are we committed to Christ or not? Are we going to go all the way through or not? If we're going to bleed, let's bleed and lead. If we're going to hurt, we're going to hurt, but we're going to keep on going. If we're going to have sickness in our body, we're going to keep going. We're going to stop because somebody told us we have cancer, because somebody told us we have lupus, because somebody told us we have high blood pressure and we have diabetes. We're not going to stop. Oh, the guy I married, he was the wrong guy. So sorry, Charlie, you married him. Let's work it out. Let's deal with it. It's hard. Marriage is hard, right, Serena? It's hard. Right, Jill? But it's good. Because what would you guys be without each other? Oh, I want him back. He's a jerk, but I want him back. He's my jerk, you know. Because some of these ladies that are seasoned here, I'm being nice when I say seasoned, they're seasoned. They would pray to have their husband back or one of those husbands back. Amen? Because all five of them couldn't be bad boys, you know. One of them was good, man. Right, amen? Some of you men too, already been married three times and then got four or five girlfriends, you too. Yeah, now we ain't getting no amens from the men, amen? One of those ladies was a good lady. You just weren't ready for a good lady. You weren't mature enough. You weren't ready for that. We've made our mistakes. We've did our experiences. Let's learn. Let's take the good with the bad because it all comes that way. Good and bad. Oh, your mama's something else, you tell your children. <laughs> That's why they're angry at you because you're talking about their mama. And you want them to be nice to you. Talk about their daddy. You talk to little girls about her daddy. That little girl ain't digging you, right, me, huh? <laughs> Can't talk about my daddy. It's my dad. You know, that's your husband, but he's my daddy. He's my hero. No matter what he does, right, twins? No matter what he does, he's the best dad in the world, huh? That's right. <laughs> that's right. There he is. He's like, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do, just... Help you guys out through the power of Jesus Christ, through the wisdom of God and the understanding of God. I understand. I'm not here to judge nobody. I know some of you get high. I know some of you get drunk. I know some of you are sleeping with women that ain't your wives. I know that. But I'm not here to judge you. God, God's going to judge you. That's not my job. My job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to say what's right, to say what's true. And then you decipher it. You can see what, what you want to add, what you don't want to add. But at the end, God will make the final decision. So we got to read and listen to the Holy Spirit. And you children and teenagers, oh, my mom's old-fashioned. She's not even hip or nothing. They were hip at one time. They were cool at one time, Miha. 
Mama was cool at one time. Yeah, right now she's looking at Mama like Mama's a square. No, Mama was hip at one time. They went to clubs and parties and threw out their hips and all that, you know. But now they've grown up. They've matured now. And they know that ain't the business no more. The business is serving God and giving you a good life and a rich life. Amen. You kids have a good life. You have a beautiful life, Christian. Yeah, there you go, baby. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he does. Most of you kids have good lives. Juan didn't own no 18 pair of shoes, 12 pair of shoes, right, Juan? Growing up, he had two, three pair of shoes, if that. We didn't, but other people had two, three pair of sneakers. That son's got a rack of shoes, boy. You go, he got a wall. <laughs> and they ain't no $100 shoes, man, I found out. I asked him, what kind of shoe is that? That's like a $300 shoe. I'm like, what the heck? $49. <laughs> On special, baby, Stacy Adams. I said, man, thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I can afford $49 shoes, man. I love you guys. I just want you to have victory. I want you to have joy, amen, in Jesus' name. He's your victory. I don't like to see teenagers that are 13, 15, 16 with poochie faces. You're way too young to be like that. So mama and dad has to... They have to sharpen up their game then. Not spoil you, because you're already spoiled. Unspoil you. Amen? Unspoil you. You're spoiled. Yes, you're spoiled. Yeah, she's nodding her head. Yes, you are. I mean, how you spoil? Spoiled little kids. Those little two right there, they got, got a dollar bill. Man, well, I used to ask for a nickel when I was his age. All right, back to 64, 63. Can I have a nickel? I asked my uncle. You have a nickel? And he's like, who wants a nickel, huh? I go, yep, a nickel. A nickel get you a candy bar, baby. A Milky Way back in those days, amen? Yep. I don't know what time it is. What time is it, guys? <laughs> Tithe and offering time. Come on, Tomas. <laughs> Raise your hands if you need an envelope. Raise your hands up high. Throw them up in the sky. Praise God. There it is, 1128. We're going to take our tithe and our offering. <laughs> I love the Lord. We're, we're not an ordinary church. Some of you guys have been to ordinary churches that have programs. They, they do the, uh, 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 the welcoming, then they do the bulletin or do the announcements, and then they do two songs. Then the pastor comes up for a half hour. And then everybody goes home the same. Today you're not going to leave the same. You're not going to leave the same. Amen. The enemy's been messing with you no more. Kick that little sucker out your house. What are you guys having a conversation with the devil for? He comes in here, get out. Get out of my house in Jesus' name. And you tell him the blood of Christ is against you. The blood of Jesus Christ covers my doors covers my ceilings. The blood of Jesus covers my walls. It's all over the floor. You can't even come in this house. This house is a holy house. This house is the temple of God where we worship God and we bless God. We're not going to argue. We're not going to fight. We're not going to do your business. We're going to do the business of the Lord. We're going to bless his name. Imagine if you did that every day in your life, in your house. Father, we bless you in this house. For as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. Hallelujah. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me have one of those right there. Praise the Lord. 
Man, I wish I could tell you guys the full truth at times. You know, but uh, some of you guys aren't ready for the the full gospel truth, so we give it in little bits until you grow, and then one day I'll be able to tell you the truth, why you struggle, why you have a hard time. You can blame me. You can blame your husband, your your stepfather. You can blame whoever you want to blame, but you know it's in you. Because when you're out there, you're doing what you want to do, right? You can do that right here. And you may not want to even be here. I don't want to be at church. I only go to church because my parents bring me to church. It's all right. One day you're going to be like pastor. I want to be in church. I always use Juan. We go to other churches. I say, Juan, stand up. I could show Juan off. He's a, God told me that yesterday. That's my trophy right there. It's a witness of mine right there, Juan Chavez. And I said, thank you, Father. I was driving home already. I already had used them. And God says, that, that's my man right there. That's my witness. That is my trophy, if I can use that word. Amen. Who would ever believe Ted Summers would be in church on a Sunday? Wow. Only God, right? And you had to believe too, sir, to be here. Because if you didn't believe, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, you follow that pretty girl to church. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she's a Christian. I better be a Christian too. But now God has got you. We all came for different reasons. I came to be sober. That's why I came to church. You guys don't know who Pastor was 29 years ago. I've been sober for 28 years now. This September will be 28 years I've been sober. God set me free and redeemed me. What he wants to do in your life, Jimmy. All that stuff you got inside of you, he wants to replace it with joy and love and kindness and happiness. People say, man, look at Jimmy. That brother changed. Just like Juan Chavez. Juan changed. Juan is loud and happy. <laughs> he used to be loud and angry. Now he's loud and happy. Right, fellas? Your sons, right? He's happy, right? <laughs> happening to you, Nemotis. Much as you fight, kick, and scream, and want to hang out with the gals and all that stuff, God is like, you don't even belong here no more. This ain't even your crowd no more. You're trying to hang on to something that's already died. You're a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you guys, gonna heal you Jimmy all the way through you just keep sitting under the word and allow the word to just saturate you and bless you change your mind with her or without her brother God's gonna heal you amen there you go because my niece she knows the truth that's another one that runs I used to be a runner too man that's why I recognize runners I ran from Jesus too I didn't want to hear about it I wanted to live my life. I thank God he didn't give up on me. I thank God he never, never quit on me. And he saved me. Now, Eddie, we even go cross country sometimes, you know. I'll start off something new here. And God says, come on back. That's Mike right there. Come on back, Pastor. So God's saying to Mike, come on back. Mike, come back to your first love. Lucas and little Freddie, God ain't never going to let you go. I don't care what you guys do. God ain't never going to let you go. He's going to love on you. It's beautiful. You too, Miss Joseph. Fight, kick, scream, all that. God says, I love you anyway. 
you guys can know the love of God. That's what he told me to lay hands on those three people. Tell them that to love the way I love and I'm going to change their lives. One was Ralph, one was Lizette, one was Margie. Just love. I ain't asking you for nothing now. Just love my people. Just love her, Jimmy. Even when she's hard to love on, you just love her. Women can be difficult, but they can be loved anyway. They're to be loved on. Some of you guys don't even know what I see from up here and know what I see from in the spirit of God. I'm going to change your life today through the power of the spirit of God, not through my power, spirit of God. Some of you sit next to your wife. And some of you that don't sit next to your wife, that shows me where you're at. You got children in between you. Those children are in between you and your relationship. I can see that in Jesus' name. You who don't sit next to your wife and you sit, there's distance between you and wife, there's distance in your relationship. We can hold hands and look all cute and, oh, hi, everybody. This is me, this is my wife. But at home, there's distance. Some of you that have your wife real close to you, it's for other reasons than love. Sometimes it's jealousy. I hope it's love. I hope that you sit next to your wife and you love her and you honor her. And you bless one another. I've done it too. I sat with my children between us. I sat with gaps between me. I'm not judging you. I've done it. That's why I recognize it. But God changes things around. Like the song was saying, he turns it around. He turns it around. If you allow him, and that's right now. Sophie, it's done. It's done. In the spirit, it's done. God's already done it. All you got to do is thank him now. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. What you're doing to my children, thank you. Because they're his children first. And he knows best for his children more than we know what's best for our children. So once you ask, just say thank you. Say thank you. Learn, learn to be grateful and thankful. A lot of us aren't grateful. A lot of you don't say you're welcome. Yeah. People say, thank you. You go, yeah, all right. You know, yeah, no worries. There you go. No worries. Someone says, thank you. You say you're welcome, children, and adults, too. You're welcome. And if they say you're welcome after you say your thank you, then you can say, my pleasure. You show them that you have value, that you have morals. You young men, the way you treat your mom, late young girls, look at that. If they're mean to their mom, guess what you got coming? You got the same thing. And you young men, if that, if that little girl is argumentative with her mom and with her dad, guess what you got coming? A lot of arguments coming. Just little morals and values adding to your life right here. That we would live right before God and honor God. With all that we say and all that we think and all that we do. Your life is no longer yours. Galatians 2.20. Hey, Galatians 2.20 for me. I got you. So you we're going to be leaving. We're not going to have. Pastor Eric, you can have next Sunday. Is that okay? 
told the man he was going to minister today. But as the Spirit of God leads, this is how we do it. Amen. We go with the flow of the Spirit. Yeah, we have an agenda, but if God interrupts it, it's his church. He does it. This is how Jesus spoke to his people, just like this. Very simple, very calm. He didn't yell. He didn't get all crazy. You know how some pastors get all crazy. Get out of the league. Jesus had the power and the authority. He said, go now. And the demons would leave. Because he had power and authority. Just like you, father and mother, you have power and authority in your house. You ain't got to yell. You ain't got to get all crazy. Why you get all crazy? Take it easy. Go take out the trash. Say it one more time. And that'll, we'll have to do it after that then. We'll take care of business the way I take care of business. But you can take out the trash right now if you like. Because I'm telling you to. Amen. Do the dishes. We shouldn't even have to tell our teenagers to do dishes. That should just be a gimme. You're getting fed. You're getting clothed. You're getting shoes. Playing Little League. Playing baseball, football, softball. All that. All that's being paid for. It's like $400 for Pop Warner nowadays, huh? What's Little League cost? How much? $300? Man, pay $10. My dad thought that was a lot of money. Probably was a lot of money back then. But here it is. I've been crucified with Christ. There's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. This is how we should live. I do not set aside the grace of God. Meaning I don't take advantage of God's grace and I can do whatever I want to. God's going to forgive me. That ain't, we, that ain't the way a Christian operates. God does do that. You're correct. But there's a day that, a day of reckoning coming. Amen. He says, I do not set aside the grace of God for it is the righteousness that comes through the law. Then Christ died in vain. If we do it because we have to do it, then Christ died unnecessarily. We'll just keep the law. We're obedient to Christ because we love him. Amen. Because we honor him. No other reason. People ask me all the time. I'll be at a wedding. They say, Pastor, you can't have a beer. Will you go to hell with the, if you have a beer? And I said, I could have a beer. I could have a beer just like you guys. But I choose not to have a beer. Because I gave my life to Christ. Youngsters at work just say, you can't smoke weed no more, Angel. You know, because they would be getting high. You, know, you don't get high. I said, nah, I ain't got to. I said, I used to, but that ain't me no more. I'm free. I can be who Christ called me to be now. Amen. I don't need something altering my mind to make me happy. I'm happy. I'm glad. Amen. I can enjoy a Dodger game and remember the score when I leave. <laughs> I should leave those games and what was the score? I don't know, but the game was good. Back in the 80s, used to go to the Coliseum and watch the Raiders play. And didn't even remember the score. I don't even remember how you got there. <laughs> who, I go, who did I come with? Somebody give me a ride home. <laughs> but God... Right, Jess? What God has done in our life, Jesse? It's amazing if your friends could see you now, huh, Jess and Carol? Like, what happened to those two? <laughs> Jesus. We don't want to do it. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithe and offering. People on Facebook and uh, YouTube, you can give too, right through Share Faith, right there. That phone number, and if you don't have a check, if you don't have cash, dial that number right there. Put it in your phone, and you'll have it all the time. Because you don't just have to give when you're at church. Say you get a bonus at work and say, you know what, I want to give God something. 
Before you spin it, give it to God. God will double that up. Amen. The phone number is 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. Give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart in Jesus' name. Raise your hands. These handsome married men will get you an envelope. Hallelujah. Oh, we already gave them out? Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm way. I'm telling you, man. Hey, I'm over here trying to get double from you. Come on now, amen. <laughs> Tell you, when God messes you up, man, it's a good thing. But maybe some of you didn't give the first round. Now the second round, you can give in Jesus' name. Pray over it and give it unto the Lord with a grateful heart.
the Zuni guys come up here and uh, pray for this right there. Brother Mike and his lovely wife Rose. Yeah, now he needs his wife. He's at, you're praying. Mike's praying. You can do it. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you for this service, Lord, and we just raise and turn around anybody that needs to be turned around, Lord. Thank you again for everything. Bless the gift and the giver, Lord, and those who could not make it or give, Lord, that they can, and uh, you put it in their hearts, Lord. Thank you again for everything. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and dismiss uh, the service. Uh, I believe that the Lord. Uh, uh, oh, okay. No, have a seat. I'm sorry. I got signals back there. Go ahead, real quick. Uh, if I could have, uh, you gonna come up here? Where's Lenny? Brother Leonard, come on up here, Brother Leonard. Amen. This is one of the ministers in the house. Hallelujah, yeah. He does uh, our, what they call First time believers. New believers. New believers. Our new believers class. Uh, you can put your Bible up here. And uh, uh, we're going to give out some uh, certificates for the people who uh, finished the class, who completed the class. It's, it's a, uh, what's the class about? sisters. Amen. The class is, um, it's a new believers class and if you haven't attended a new believers class, it's just basically learning how to share your faith with, uh, with people. Um, you know, reading your word, attending church, why reading your word, attending church is important. Uh, sharing your faith is important. Um, knowing the relationship between God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, there's more other topics in the class. Um, I was blessed by it. You know, I've been serving the Lord for a lot of years. So even if you need like a recap, you know, I was doing it myself with, with the students. Um, you know, we're always learning. Amen. We never come to a point where like we know it all because we don't. Only God knows it all. Um, so I, I got a good refreshing. My wife did it with me. She's been serving the Lord for years as well. We did it together as a couple. And um, it was great. And I would encourage you, we're going to be doing it again in September. And I would encourage you, if you have not attended a new believers class, I would encourage you to attend. Be part of it. You know, be a blessing. Not just be blessed, but be a blessing to others. Amen. And um, if you're seasoned, you're seasoned in the Lord and you just need a recap, come on in. You know, the more the merrier. Amen. Um, my wife's going to come up, my beautiful wife, Armida. And we're going to basically call uh, people up, and we're just going to give you your certificate. We're going to bless you. It's a certificate of achievement. Amen. New Believers class signed by Pastor Angel. Amen. On this day, July 10th of 2022. And we're also going to bless you with a book. It's called, the book is called The New Believer's Guide to Effective Christian Living. It's not to take the place of your Bible. Amen. It's just a quick reference guide. It, everything that we did in the class, it's all in this little book right here. So this is just to help you in your journey when it comes to studying and reading the Word of God. Amen. So we're going to call up our first, uh, you know, we're going to call them up. If you're a couple, we're going to call you up as a couple. Uh, Fred and Anna Mancina. So Brother Fred, Sister Anna, you got your, got your book. Amen. And, and, and please stay up here. Amen. All right, our next couple, Mike and Rose Zuniga. <laughs> 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 
he said, Amen. There it is. There you go. There you go, Brother Mike. Amen, amen. Our next, this brother is just, everybody's a blessing to me here. I love all of you, amen. But this brother right here, this brother, Brother Jesse De Leon. So right here, just to recap real quick, everybody here, it was, um, you know, they always say it's the first class. So the first class always gets away with a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it was, it, it was, you know, it, 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 it's a process, but everybody here, they attended. And uh, I believe that they were blessed. Amen. They came out. It's a I mean, they came out an hour before church starts. That right there in itself tells me that, you know, they were, they're hungry. Amen. They want to know the things of God. Amen. So I just commend them for that. Amen. Our next brother, Brother Ralph. Yeah. Ralph De Leon. Just so those of you that don't know, this is generational right here. Father, son, two generations. Amen. Amen. Brother, brother, Ralph is a t brother Ralph is a teacher. He teaches the, 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 the children. And so he's, he's, he's planting seed. What did we learn in the class? We're like to be mailmen, right? You know how the mailmen deliver the mail? That's what we do. We deliver the gospel, the word of God. Don't worry about their hearts, whether they receive or they don't. That's not your job. Your job is to deliver the mail, deliver the word of God. God is who prepares the soil and the heart. And I think a lot of it, we hesitate because we feel like they got to receive. It's not our, that's not our place. That's God's place. Amen. We're just there to deliver the word of God. Amen. Regina Cordero. Amen. So right here, I was like, this sister needs to, to like I said, we, we don't know it all, right? We're always learning. This sister is, I love this sister with all my heart and soul. She's, I, I mean, she's just a spiritual woman of God. I know she lived she lived with us for like six years. I know this woman. She practices what she preaches. She really doesn't preach. She just lives it. Amen. Amen. Sister Olivia Rodriguez. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Amen. Congratulations. This next brother right here. Brother Edgar Rodriguez. Woo! Congratulations, my brother. You did it, brother. Congratulations. Amen. Thank you, brother. And I'm telling you, this class, it's not about age. You know, we had two youths that volunteered. Just a real quick. I, you, know, you know how when we did the, the turning point, we would show it on the overhead. I had some people come and say, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in the foyer? Are you going to, like, you know, get people? And, you know, and, you know, the Spirit of God said, I'm going to provide the harvest. It's already being shown on the overhead. I'm going to provide the people to attend. He attended. I mean, the Lord provided more than enough. All ages, all walks of life. This next sister in the Lord, Angel Sandoval. There. Congratulations, sister. Thank you. 
And our next, like I said, we had two youth. Our next youth, Janai Aldama. Congratulations, Miha. Yeah, you can stay here. Next year, Nana. Again, I had to, like, say I'm sorry next class because we could barely fit everybody in the classroom. We had a big classroom. So I'm believing the next class, God's just going to provide. And if he has to give us a bigger classroom, then he gives us a bigger classroom. Amen? And the next person, the love of my life, my beautiful wife, Armida Luna. <laughs> So right here, this is the New Believers class of Turning Point Fellowship of the year 2022. Amen. We want to, I want to, I want to thank you for being, for being committed to this. Again, you're, you're, you're here, again, to be a blessing. Remember when we opened up in Ephesians 4? We're all gifts to equip the body of Christ. Amen. And thank you, Pastor, for allowing this to happen through the Spirit of God. Um, I believe that you have right here, these people are harvesters ready to go out and deliver the mail to the harvest. I, I want to, I, I know everybody's ready, ready, I just, I'm not here to preach, but I want to share something that the Lord wanted me to give them personally. Is that okay? Can I do that, Pastor, real quick? Um, it's out of the Word of God, of course. Okay, so this is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to give you. Remember we opened up with the opening up chapter, Ephesians chapter 4. So you know now that who you are in Christ, your gifts. Your gifts to equip the body, to bless the body. Amen? You're, you're, you have graduated to that now. Amen? Now I want to close with you with this. This is from the Lord Jesus. And this is in John chapter 14 says, beginning with verse 1, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am go <clears throat> excuse me, that I am going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Amen. Amen. That's from the Lord Jesus. So now, the next, go out. Go out there, share the gospel with people, and, and, and be a blessing. And, I, and these, this is words of encouragement from the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a good round of applause.
In Jesus' name, amen. You could be next right there, man. The first time believers class is going to start in September. Probably the first week, second week of September. We're going to start it. We're going to give Lenny a, you know, a good six weeks off. And then uh, he'll come back right back at it. Uh, we have the, the healing and deliver, the deliverance and healing class. That will be coming back, the second part now, second semester. If you want to uh, join that right there, that will be uh, uh, in September too. The sister uh, Celia, yeah, she's, uh, uh, she's the head of that one. She's the minister there. So she'll be ministering there. Then we're going we're gonna to start another class because that's the, that's the vision of this house, that this church will be operating six days a week. Give it one day's rest like the Lord rested. But give it six days that we're going to keep this thing a campus, and it's going to be operating all the time. We're going to have yoga coming up and things like that, a little exercise class for to bring the uh, people in from the thing. They're going to be teaching a, a flag thing real quick, a flag class, uh, why flags are used and what colors they represent and things like that. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a brothers to brothers with, with men. So it's going to be the first 12 men who sign up that are going to be able to be in that class. I'm, I'm going to be giving that one. Pastor Eric and I will be tag teaming. He didn't know that, but now he does. He's back there. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, we'll be doing a tag team uh, every other week. One of us will take a, a subject and, and run with it and teach the men how to become brothers in Christ, man. You know, so uh, that's going to be good. So God is doing great things. Don't forget, we announced this earlier, but don't forget we have flyers in the foyer. Kids Day, invite your friends, invite your family. It's all free. We got hamburgers, hot dogs, chili dogs, nachos, ice cream cones, cotton candy, uh, soda pop, juices, water, healthy water. But for you adults, water. For the kids, they can have their soda pop and ice cream cones. And don't tell them they can't or I'll pull your ears. Let them, let them have it. Let them have it. Amen. Let them have it, Regina. They can have it. Oh, sit Thomas down. That little brother's already back to himself. Huh? I'm back. <laughs> so we're going to have that. So uh, be part of it. We need volunteers to do all the booths and the, the serving and things like that. There's going to be games. There's going to be water slides. There's going to be pools. There's going to be jumpers. And uh, there's going to be some games going on. So come out and, you know, just give us three hours. And then someone else will relieve you for two, three hours. And then, you know, it's an eight-hour event. So we, the more people we get out there, the less we all have to work. We said need a setup crew and a teardown crew. So come on out and help us set up. And then you can go home if you like and come back and help us tear down later on in the day. All right? But it's going to take us all. It's going to take us all. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But... Uh, my son's here, Lucas, he's the one that uh, thought of this. He was about eight years old, seven years old when he asked about Kids Day, and we did it, and uh, it happened. You know, he's the, so he's the founder of, of this vision right here, and it, and it goes on. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Bert. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a youngster then, you know, when uh, we started the church. He's been in church. He tells me, I've been in church ever since I was a mom's stomach. <laughs> Still there. Praise the Lord. We're, let's all stand to our feet. We're going to dismiss. Uh, enjoy your lunch. Enjoy your fellowship with one another. Make sure it's fellowship that you do speak about Jesus in your, in your conversation. Don't let it be all about the Lakers or the Rams or Packers or Raiders or, you know, the Clippers or things like that or cooking or the person, you know. Have Jesus in your conversation. You know what Jesus did today, you know, all right? Jesus did some great things. I can see your face. Man, it's all completely different right here. What God has done in your life, that's beautiful. You know, just by the touch of God, by the power of God, amen? You know what he's doing in Ted's life, man, it's beautiful. Ted don't see it, but I can see it, man. It's all bright, man, and everything, you know. I know he doesn't like to be called out like that, but. We're going to change him with the power of the Spirit of God and the power of love. Amen. We're going to love on this brother, man. And he's going to love on us too. Amen. Just like we did with Jesus. Look at Jesus, a happy camper back there now. Amen. <laughs> he's, 
Praise the Lord. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for what you've done. What you've done today, right now. As the song said, right now. You set us free. You healed us. You delivered us, Lord God. You broke the chains off. No more shackles, Lord God. We're free to dance. We're free to worship. We're free to be who you called us to be. We've been forgiven for our sins. <laughs> Devil, you can't remind us of our past no longer. We're free. We're free in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I thank you and I bless you for the divine protection over our children and our grandchildren, wherever they may be and wherever they may go, Lord, that you divinely protect them. I pray that angels would be, camp be camped about them, round about them, Lord God, watching over their ways. I pray that you keep the evil one and the wicked one, the unreasonable one, one away from them, Lord. But I do pray that you would send ministers to them, to the teenagers, to the youth, to the young adults, and to the seasoned adults, that when they hear the gospel come to them, they say, pastor's prayers are being heard. Someone is coming to talk to me about Jesus. And don't tell them, oh, I already know, I already know. Listen, you can learn something. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. On our way home, no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place, Lord. I thank you that as we break bread with one another, Father, we ask that it be blessed, that it be good, that it be nourishing, what you have provided for us once again. Let us laugh. Let us enjoy our lives. And tomorrow when we go back to work, let us be the ones that have a smile. Let us be the ones that have a bounce in our step, joy, Father, in our laugh, in our, in our, in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. We thank you for the people at, on Facebook and uh, YouTube that, Father, we're believing they're going to meet us here. They're going to come and introduce themselves and say, I watched you on YouTube. I watched you on Facebook, and I wanted to come. So, Father, we're going to welcome with a hug and love and the joy of the Lord, your joy, your love, and your hug, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And all his beautiful people said, Amen. Hallelujah. We're dismissed. Hug on somebody. Shake somebody's hand. Introduce yourself to them.